Now let's talk about layers in Photoshop. Now, as you know, layers is how you control your image. And Photoshop is all about layer management, and it's all about your workflow with your layers. And so we're going to go over our layers panel here, and the individual functionality for our icons, our sliders, our stack here, and um, also the icons on the bottom, and then our drop down, which has more layer functionality. Now, immediately, we have our layer transparency blend modes. And as you know or may not know, that when you click on this and you set it to multiply or screen, add, overlay, so on and so forth, that will control the pixels on your layer and their transparency and additive effects or different color effects to the layers underneath them. So another example of that, if we have our circle, and we can go ahead and do add, which isn't going to do anything because it's pure white, or overlay. You can see that there is a layer transparency blend mode effect. Set this back to normal. Moving on, we have our dude and our opacity. Dragging our slider, you can see that our dude becomes less visible or less opaque. And another way to control that is simply by the number keys. 5 is 50%, 1 is 10%, 30%, 40%, 50, 0 is 100. Now our fill works only if we have our layer styles turned on. So we have layer styles turned on and some effects, and that's what this icon says, is means we have a layer style turned on. And if we reduce this, you can see that our interior pixels are becoming less opaque, but our layer styles are remaining 100%. So just to show another example, if we turn off our effects and then try our fill again, they completely disappear just like opacity. So there's no difference between opacity and fill unless you have layer style effects turned on. Moving on to the locks here, we have our lock transparency. So by clicking that, locks the opaque pixels on our layer and sort of almost acts as a mask. So if we have our brush, this will allow us to paint within the opaque pixels on that layer. If we turn this off, we could paint all over the layer. And then we have our image pixels. Clicking on that won't allow you to paint or do anything to the layer, so it basically just locks the pixels on your layer. Locking the position will basically lock the position of the pixels so you cannot move them. and then there's lock all which basically disables everything for that layer you won't be able to paint move or do anything so that's the top part of the layers panel we'll talk about our stack in a second but at the bottom we have our link layers so if we turn on our circle here and we link these basically these two layers will be linked until we turn it off so if we want to move them, they move together. If we only want to move one, unlink the layers, and they're now separate. Now you can also temporarily link layers for movement, which is you can hold shift and select two layers, or control or command, and you can move them together that way as well. And then we have our layer styles which we'll get into that more layer, but this is how you add a layer style. Or you could simply double click the layer and it'll bring up your layer styles. From there we have our masks. Clicking on that will add a mask, which will allow you to paint and mask out pixels on your layer. And we're just going to delete this layer mask and move on. We'll talk about that more layer. 
we have our adjustment layers which allows you to create a new adjustment layer like our levels etc and then we have our groups and we have our create a new layer and our delete layer now layers have individual functionality as well so selecting a layer just go ahead and click on a layer that you want and to the left you have your visibility and you could toggle your visibility now another cool thing is that you can use alt and you can see that that will isolate this layer and only display what is on that selected layer I'll click it again and it turns on all the other layers if you control click your layer it will select everything that's on that layer or the pixels that are on that layer so again just command or control select your thumbnail and that's going to select your pixels um, so there is functionality on top of this eyeball control click it on a Mac you will get hide this layer show hide all other layers and then you have your color so you could select red and you could color code your layers that way you can also right click on the layer and do layer properties and you, again you have your name where you can rename your layer I don't want to put my name there I'm going to call it dude and your color right clicking again you have your blending options which will bring up all your layer styles right clicking again you have your duplicate layer or delete layer now you can duplicate your layer and it'll ask for the name for your copy or your destination which you can create a new document and the new layer name or you could delete your layer from here and it'll ask you if you want to delete it now you also can just drag it to the garbage can or you could simply select and delete your layer from there a couple different ways to duplicate it again you can right click and do duplicate layer or control or command J will duplicate it or simply drag it to the new layer icon so a couple different ways to do the same thing there now let's talk about grouping grouping is totally efficient and it's a good way to work especially when we have tons of layers inside Photoshop or um, you know anything that you're gonna get is gonna have several layers and you could break it up into different hierarchies to um, organize the layers through groups now we have our circle I'm gonna select him and I'm gonna rename him so just simply double click the layer name there and uh, let's call him circle can't spell at all and I'm gonna put this behind the dude so in the hierarchy in your stack here you can just arrange everything just by clicking and dragging it so if you want the circle behind the dude just simply drag it and move it behind the dude if you want the dude behind the circle just click and drag if you want the dude behind everything go ahead and just click and drag your hierarchy however it wants now whatever is at the top the layer you have at the very top is sort of the layer closest to you or the top of the hierarchy or the foreground any layer that's underneath is basically just a stack that goes down to the bottom so one thing we're gonna do is group the dude in the circle now all you have to do is shift select both of these guys and you could hit control G and that's gonna create a new group if you open that up you could see that our dude is in there and the circles in there and we have our layer group now another way to do that is just to grab the two layers and drag them to the group icon and there you go does the exact same thing and creates a new group so I'm gonna group my layer I'm gonna call this dude and circle and then I'm going to right click and do group properties now on here you have your name and you have your color again so I'm going to make this uh, red and then you could display 
just certain channels of your choice. So underneath we have our red now and our group. Now say we want to group our background. Go ahead and shift select these. Group and call this background. We can go ahead and change the color. Let's make this green. And then we have our dude in circle and our background. Now these also have layer transparency modes. So you could blend them together as one. And one thing that's also very helpful is that you can group groups. So if we select both of these and group them, we can call this main. And then you can see that we have our two groups inside the main one. And we can move them together. Oops. Or separate or the whole hierarchy. So that's pretty much it for the layer functionality as far as the stack. Now let's take a look at some of the things that are in the dropdown. So let's click on our dropdown and there's even more layer functionality here which we have our new layer, duplicate group, delete group, delete hidden layers. Now these change based off of what is selected in the layers palette. So if we have a layer selected and do our dropdown we have new layer, duplicate layer, delete layer. But when we had a group selected, that gives you the group options. Like new group, group from layers, and so on. Now moving down, we have lock all layers in a group, which, you know, will basically lock all the layers in a group. So if we say lock all layers in group, it'll ask us what to lock. So transparency, position, image, or all. So that's just another way of locking your, your pixels on your layer there, or you can lock them here. And moving on, we have Convert to Smart Object. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but then we have Layer Properties, Blending Options. Um, layer Properties, is, again, is just your Layer Properties. Blend Options are your Layer Styles and create clipping mask. We will cover that in the masking section, but to give you a quick idea, um, what we see there is basically um, the dude is now using the circle or the layer underneath it as a clipping mask. So if we move our circle around, you can see that it's acting as a mask for the dude. And then you could right click and just do release clipping mask. Going back, we can do merge down, so this is going to merge the two layers together. So it merged the circle and the dude together. Merge visible will basically merge everything that is visible in your image right now into one layer. Flatten image will basically flatten the entire image into one background layer. Then you have animation options. We're not really going to get into that. Panel options. We have our thumbnail size, where you can change that. Our thumbnail contents, which is layer bounds. So it's going to show you, like, um, the in right now it's set to entire document. So it's going to show you the document or just the layer bounds. And so if we hit OK, you can see that this layer is taking up just around this guy and displaying it as the thumbnail rather than the whole document. Let's go back to that. Use default masks on fill layers. So anytime you create a fill layer, you can see that this mask gets added. So that controls that. If we turn that off, You can see that no mask is created. Looking at that again, expand new effects. So every time you create a new layer style with effects, um, Photoshop is going to expand its hierarchy down. So an example of that is this. 
So when you create a new effect, and let's just do that quickly, um, with that on, let's add some quick layer styles, drop shadow, and uh, outer glow, just to show an example. You can see that it auto expands the hierarchy for the layer style effects. Personally, I find that kind of annoying, so I'm going to turn that off. And then add copy to copied layers and groups, which is basically when you're duplicating a layer or duplicating something, it's going to add the word copy. So if we turn this off, and we duplicate, we don't get the word copy. And then we have close and close tab group, which is functionality for closing the group and closing the tab. And that's pretty much it for the layers panel. Now let's take a look at another example and another area of where layers are located at in Photoshop and that's in the layer menu bar. So at our menu bar here we have layer and you can see we have all the familiar things that we knew from the layer panel. We have new layer, background from layer, group, group from layers, duplicate layer, delete layer, and so on. Now all these things here are the same things that are located in the layer panel. We've got our adjustment layers, our masks, and all that stuff, and that can be found right here as well. Now let's talk a little bit about something that we didn't really talk about earlier, which is rasterizing. And rasterizing is a process of um, having some shapes that are in a layer that are vector shapes, and also um, fill layers like a pattern or a gradient that are editable only through the layers panel. Um, now you can't really change this color and you can't really affect any pixels on this layer because there really aren't any pixels. Like it's just a color that's through a solid color fill. Um, so you can't really draw on this layer or do anything because the shape layer must be rasterized before proceeding. And so to rasterize, you could do a couple different things. You can right click on the layer and just do rasterize layer. And so what you see is the vector mask got applied to the color and created the pixels that represent what was there before or the shape. So that's the process of rasterizing. I'm going to undo that. And then we're going to talk about um, layer, arrange. And so arrange is just um, arranging your layers in a hierarchy like before in the stack. So you can kind of bring to front, bring forward, send back, send it back. And these are just hotkeys here that you can use to manipulate that hierarchy. So if we'd like the red there, we want to move it up. We could use the brackets up, down, and it's just a hotkey rather than just drag it. Now let's go back to our menu bar and we'll go layer and we're going to look at align and distribute. And so what align and distribute allows you to do is to select multiple objects that are on multiple layers and align them with each other precisely. So I'm going to make this window a little bit bigger so we can see this. And right away when you select multiple layers, your option bar gives you some align and distribute controls. Now these are the same controls that are under the layer align and distribute. So rather than working at it through here, we're going to work with it through the option bar. So right now we have our three buttons, red, green, blue. And they're sort of arranged all in wacky little manner here. And we're going to align these. So align, we have align to top edges, align to vertical centers, align bottom edges, align left, horizontal centers, and right edges. So if you go ahead and click this button, you'll see that it aligned the top edges for each one of these buttons. Or vertical centers, which it moves them all to the vertical centers of the object. 
or bottom left edges horizontal centers right edges and that's pretty much it for the alignment tools again it's very handy so what we're going to do is try to just align these into a row and have these spaced equally by distributing them so let's do our vertical centers and then here we have top edges but this doesn't work because we don't have any objects that are above or below this so we're just going to distribute them through horizontal centers now right now they're all perfectly spaced from each other and we just arrange them really quick so just another example of Photoshop and the layers and how you could arrange objects and align them and distribute them and that's pretty much it for the layers and the layer functionality we talked about the layer functionality in the stack um, within the layers panel we talked about the layers drop down and then we talked about layers under the menu bar and all of the functionality here can be found in the same place as here and in the icons so it's just different ways of manipulating the same thing but anyway um, really powerful and it's really important for your workflow um, especially when you're trying to be efficient and managing um, files that have large amounts of layers so um, just be mindful about that and the more that you learn about these and the flu more fluid you get with it um, the faster you'll be